Hello, everybody, and happy new year. Hello, everybody, happy new year, and welcome to episode thirty-seven. One. Hello, everybody, and welcome to episode thirty-seven of the Crochet Cakes podcast. Happy New Year! We hope that for the start of the year, three days, because this is the third of January, that you've had a wonderful Christmas. We are still celebrating Christmas here on right. till the sixth right. of January. So we've got all the decorations, got still all the decorations up, up. All of our three Christmas trees up. And we're not done giving yet, and we're no. not done eating yet, and we're not done celebrating and yet. drinking and all that that qualifies as a celebration. Right. Mm -hmm. be a couple of days more until uh, Three Kings Day, mm -hmm. which is uh, January the 6th, and um, then more or less, I guess it'll be over. Yeah, after that, and it'll... It'll really be over. It's been a bit of a hard Christmas for the people here on the island because no matter how much you wanted to get into the Christmas spirit, it was it was hard knowing so many people were still without electricity and water and you know just lacking some basic necessities. So it was it felt kind of weird to celebrate what we had because other people didn't have. And um, even we, with all our solar energy set up ran out of energy yeah. um, early on Christmas Eve and had to send everybody home. We weren't here, we were at our, our mother and our, our... No, we were here. Grandma. Christmas Eve, oh, we Christmas were here. Eve, we were here, right. It was the 31st of December that we ran out of energy, Again. so we kind of <laughs> said goodbye on the, right. what, uh, 10 o'clock at night? So right. Christmas Eve, we were here, and um, one of the cables to the setup had burned out, and we didn't realize it. On um, New Year's Eve, we were at our, my mother-in-law's house, yeah. and um, my husband had set up a uh, solar system there, and uh, something went wrong with the batteries, and by 9 o'clock, we were sent home. Oh, and by the way, guys, if you can hear that in the background, it's the solar system. Right. It's, we're um, recording a bit later in the day than right. we usually do, so it's going to be going um, on more frequently yeah. because of the fact that there's a lot of... Um, energy coming into the system and the batteries might already be charged and the overflow starts that uh, fan going on well but anyway noise. we are here to welcome you to a crochet knitting crafty podcast and, and hopefully the start of a crochet knitting the crafty start new year of a crafty new year and to all of you returning viewers thank you so much for coming back for another year of what we hope to be what we hope will be gorgeous makes and we hope your makes are equally gorgeous and to those of you checking out the podcast for the first time then thank you so much Throughout i am oh yeah well caroline well, well. clarissa's mom yeah. inspired professor capital i capital p on ravelry inspire underscored professor on instagram and that's where i'm most at yeah and I am Crochet Cakes anywhere on the internet. I have been lacking in activity in every single of the social media platforms I'm supposed to participate in, but more on that later. You can still follow me on Instagram as Crochet Cakes. I am more active there. You can follow the Crochet Cakes Ravelry group on uh, Ravelry. You can join and we've got a wonderful community of crafters that I have sadly Abandoned, abandoned for this year. Well, I've been in and out over Christmas, yeah. and um, just um, trying to keep it, trying to keep it alive. Um, but for the most part, I think a lot of the uh, threads on all of the um, groups have been quiet. were quiet because it's December, right. you know. Mm -hmm. You want to share more with your family and friends and all that jazz. Mm -hmm. But and so we didn't have a uh, cow going on this no, year. No, we either. didn't. It was it was just going to be way too difficult with all the. Um, you know, technical Still communication problems. Yeah, right. and it was just going to be a nightmare, so we decided not to do the cow. But um, we did do a 12 days of Christmas. Yeah, so it was our vlog mess. And it was, luckily, we were able to get those up. Yeah, we were able to get those up. And if you didn't watch them, you can still go watch them. They're on a playlist that says 12 days of Christmas 2017. If you right. feel and like... You could just wait until July and do Christmas in July yeah, if you're one of yeah. those people. <laughs> yeah, just um, feel free to check them out. And um, what we did, in case you didn't watch, was... Um, 
that we exchange exchange gifts. gifts for the 12 days of for Christmas. Christmas. Prior we tried to um, prior to Christmas. to Christmas. So we were following the ideas of the 12 days of Christmas song when we were gifting each other gifts. Um, some of them were handmade. Some of them were low budget, but we were trying to keep it as low budget as possible to show you that it was possible to do the 12 days of Christmas giving without spending $30,000, <laughs> which is more or less what it would cost to gift every single item on the 12 days right, of Christmas. Based on and, USA Today and other people's um, yeah, uh, kind of like calculations. calculations. And the ironic thing is that the most expensive gift is not the five golden rings. No, it's the seven swans of swimming. Mm -hmm. I don't know what you're going to do with seven swans of swimming, but they're pretty expensive to purchase. Mm -hmm. So having said all that, um, those 12 Days of Christmas makes were part of our makes for the year of 2017. So what we thought we would share with you today is uh, what we achieved during 2017, uh, craft-wise. Um, start with a review we'll of our review favorite of makes, year. of our um, first makes. And, yeah, just um, re overall review and then mention our favorite makes. Then we're just going to, of course, move on to what are we hooked on, some knitting, and we're going to finish off with uh, intentions. Right. Um, so just join us, and I guess we're just going to kick it off with makes of 2017. 2017 review of makes. Okay, so where do we start? You go. So we wanted to start out first with um, the 2017 was a big year for me, for example, and I think for Clarissa too in a lot of aspects in terms of it was the first time that we did a lot of things. Mm -hmm. For example, it was the first time that I completed my crochet sock. I started mm -hmm. in 2016, but it didn't get completed <laughs> until, until the beginning of 2017. And, um, but then from then on, you just went on this right, sock machine. Right. From there, it's I like, continued to make socks. And I think since then, what's my count? I have made eight pairs since then. So in total this year, I did nine pairs of crochet socks. And one of them is new. I just finished it. So yeah. you'll be seeing it later on during the episode. But most of the other ones, you've seen it on Instagram episodes, and on so previous episodes. During the year. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, you have a sock account? <laughs> For what? Okay. Um, no, actually, a couple of them I there. did think that I made more socks than I did last year uh -huh. because last year I made one, three. If you count, okay, the first. If count. you count the first mm -hmm. ever, no, I made four. If you count the first ever sock I made, which was in May, then I made one for my sister's birthday, which is in October. Mm. Then I made one for my brother Christmas. for Christmas and one for mom for Christmas. For Christmas, yes. I gave them two for Christmas. So after that, I did my New Year's Day cast on, essentially, because I was going to cast it on on Christmas Eve, but we were just way too zonked out. So I didn't get cast on on two New Year's Day um, 2017. So well, that was, and it was finished by March. I was finished before March because that was the first pair I took to Edinburgh, mm -hmm. which broke. But I fixed them. I just don't have them with me anymore to show you how I fixed them. Basically, I knit, but then I crochet. So I knit a little flap, uh, picking up my stitches, and then I sewed it shut, crocheting my stitches. It made sense to me. Anyway, um, so I made that one. Then I made the gothic cake. Mm, right. Uh, then I made... Uh, I started making one, which is still a half-finished object. So I guess that doesn't count. Um, I made... Two for me. Two for you. And that was it. So I made the exact same amount four. of socks that I did you made last four? year. I made four pairs of socks. So I well, because seven. mostly because this year's Christmas, we didn't do a lot of makes. No. We did for each other, but yeah. we didn't do for people outside, no. mostly. No. A little bit here and there, but not a lot. Like last year, because um, if you remember, we had a lot of uh, so so a couple of gifts we took. I made two socks for you and two socks for me. Four. <laughs> That's what I made. Right. I think it's um, funny. We right. each got two pairs of Well, it was also a year of garments, which was one of our intentions last year was to do a year of garments, and I think we did pretty good at that. Yeah. I uh, my first think. garment was my feather and fan top with the yarn that you brought me from Edinburgh. Mm. Uh, that was from, from Loop. Loop. From yeah. Loop. Loop and um, after that, I have made since five more. So in total this year, I have six garments. I'm wearing my... Luna well, from did you count your Dora two? Orenstein's you just, book. You sewed two skirts. No, I only counted my crochet. Oh, well, I'm but. counting my crochet and no. my sewing. 
because it was a big achievement. I mean, um, last year I sewed two Holly Burn skirts. One was, was ish because it was the first time I ever sewed the skirt. Um, but if you count um, knit, crochet, and sewn garments, I have a total of 13 handmade garments, which I think was pretty good. I mean, right. it almost equals to one a month and mm -hmm. then a spare. So I thought mm -hmm. that was great. Um, I did make my first and only knit garment, um, which was the top I wore um, to London when I was um, went to Loop with Emma and Catherine and my friend Rachel. I made my first, um, not, well, they don't categorize shawls as garments, they're called accessories. accessories. So I made my first knitted accessory also last year, which was my um, snow melt. Snow That's melt. actually the first knit, knit thing you ever made last year. No, because year. I think before that, well, no. in last year, yes. Yeah. That was the, that was the, the first, knit, first knit, knit, because yeah. previously I'd taken that course the year before. But it was the only, wasn't the only one until the end of the year I made a cow, but it was my first knitted shawl and the first, um, what did they call it, mystery cow that I participated in. And I learned a lot in the sense that you can actually take on projects that somebody might say that you're not prepared for because my knitting was pretty raw from, I hadn't practiced it a lot since mm -hmm. I had learned it when I was very young. And I decided I was gonna participate in this cow just because of the introduction that the um, designer put on her mystery that cow. That was Helen, right? And it's, right, and inspired Helen Stewart. Yeah. And it's, she's from a Curious Handmaid? Curious Handmaid. That's yeah, that's and, the one you're and um, it was just so inspiring her introduction that I said, "Oh, I think I can do this." And I got my yarns together, and I actually made. I mean, there were a whole bunch of stitches that I had to learn along the way. It has little defects, but you learn that with big projects like this that go from 20 stitches to 500, it's very easy to hide mistakes most of the time. So it wasn't perfect, but it was a first knit for me. Um, what about shawls? How did you do it with shawls? I did my first crochet shawl this year at the very beginning of the year as a Christmas present. Uh, it was a pattern from the crochet crowd. The crochet crowd. Well, in shawls, I don't know the name of it, but it was from the crochet crowd. I have I done with shawls? I did two and a half, I guess. I did the Hotel of Bees shawl, which I gave to you, and I did the. Uh, Oh, the, um, the shawl for the Summer mm -hmm. of Romance right. gal right. that I hosted with Claudia of the Crochet Luna podcast. Right. That's from right. Claudia. the Crochet Shawl. The, That's from the Fog. It was Fog Break by Kat Golden, and it's the Shawl Book 3, Sorry. I believe. Um, so I made that one, and then I started the Lyula stole, and it started. Sorry. I haven't... I haven't finished it. I, I'm going to confess that I am carrying projects from 2017 to 2018 because I couldn't bring myself to finish them. See, I have a problem. When I start a project, I have to um, take, advantage. take advantage of that start, that impetus, and get more than halfway through because once I'm halfway through, if it's something that I have to keep winding yarn for and adding it, it's really difficult to convince myself I need to make this. To continue and finish it instead of taking on something yeah. new. And something um, new looks much more attractive. And also the problem was that I wasn't sure the person I was making it for was going to appreciate it. But there's always me. I know. But, so it was me, but, and I loved it. It was beautiful. I would have kept it in a in a blink, even though there are very few opportunities to use it here. But well, um, we'll see. Maybe as my children a, continue to move towards the, the United States, well, I'll have more opportunities. Maybe to use it'll all be a Christmas things. gift for you next year. The rate I'm going with that shawl. <laughs> well, so. I did. In total, this year I made five crochet shawls. With that first one, and then the Hotel of Bees, Hotel of Bees, the blur, the, blur. the dragon shawl. Oh, and I'm also counting that knitted shawl. So in total, all the shawls wow. I made this year, there were four crocheted, which is not a lot. If you, I mean, <laughs> hello, these new people on Instagram, they're just spitting out shawls. Like for I the ones keen wonder from crowd. The, from the, from the <laughs> crochet cottage. Cozy. Oh my God, I'm sorry, Hannah. 
It's like your titles cozy are, crochet cottage. It's a tongue twister for me, so I never know if it's a cozy crochet cottage or the cozy cottage crochet. Oh. But I'm pretty sure it's cozy crochet cottage. Really? We always do this, yeah. don't we, Hannah? Sorry. So yeah, Charlie from the Love Charlie podcast, Love Charlie Crochet podcast, also crochets a lot of shawl. Claudia well, crochets yeah. a lot of shawl. Don't even talk about Sandra. Sandra. <laughs> Cherry Hart. And, How do you uh, guys do it? Catherine. Catherine. And Treats. Rosina. And uh, Faye. And Faye. <laughs> and Faye. I, mean, I mean, all of these people design such beautiful. Is four shawls yeah. is nothing next to... Tons of shawls, but they also have more use for them. I make them because I find them pretty, or the yarn, yarn. I find the track is in. I'm a lot about names. If I like a name, I just yeah, I like things. It's true. And I, I, I buy do things that, based on their names. I do that with yarn, but mm, I'm trying to stop doing it because we have a big announcement to make. Don't worry. <laughs> okay, <laughs> you say, okay. and, I'll, and, I'll, and so, I'll back you up. <laughs> part of our intentions from last year were that we weren't going to purchase any more yarn. Well, no, that we were going to limit not purchase stash. until we had used yeah. enough of our stash. Well, that didn't work well for me. Mom did better, except that every time she saw her stash dwindling, she bought more to replenish it. So that was our intention. This year, we're trying to be a bit more generous to ourselves and we intend to not purchase new yarn until a very big thing happening in the market. Oh yeah, I know, I know, I know. I want it. We are going to the Edinburgh Yarn Festival. EYF, here we go! And I mean we, this time it's we, it's yep. not just yep. me. Yep. Um, we don't have tickets because they haven't gone on sale, but we have airplane tickets, so that's like half of the battle right there, right? Right. I right. um, still need to book my accommodation, which I will be doing later on today before I forget. And so that's like, what, 95% of it planned? We're going to be a party of four, supposedly, yeah. but if the other two decide they don't want to go, we're still going. Yeah, we're still going. It's, it's a thing. Because it's I happening. promised a lot of you guys, I promised... Sandra and because Catherine we want to go meet a lot of people that we and know Faye. and all those people that kept in touch with us while we were going yeah. through this hurricane crisis and all the people that kept us going we just want to go and meet people in person so we're gonna make it happen before we can't yeah before we can no longer do it yeah. so it's going to happen Unless another hurricane comes. Gosh. <laughs> don't, that. Even, don't even do even But it's that. not hurricane season until November, so. I mean And let's hope an earthquake. I mean, not doesn't November until July. From July to November. So we should be good. Yeah. And no earthquakes, please. And but this is hope no hurricane goes that way either. Yeah. And no earthquake goes that way either. Or tornadoes. Barring so, any natural disasters, we will be at EYF 2000. And hopefully, a lot of you will be there too. And hopefully, and this time I won't forget to introduce myself to you people because <laughs> I always do. We won't be shy and we can go and fangirl everybody and oh, yeah. jump up and down and give hugs and kisses. So, and Pat Golden, I know you don't watch this podcast, but I'm planning on fangirling this time because last year I just went, You're Cat Golden. Hi, can I take a picture? This year, now, I am going to let my inner fangirl loose, and she will behave in the sense that she will not forget to introduce herself to people, like I did last year. Everybody I met, I just forgot to mention who I was. And so hopefully, if we you see us, made. Right? <laughs> okay. we'll have some t-shirts made that say, like, crochet cakes, uh, uh, what? what do you call it? Crochet cakes podcast? No, or the like people that work the for entourage. <laughs> and hopefully you'll see us and you won't be shy either. You'll come and you'll say hello. And Rosina, I'm speaking directly to you because you forgot to say hello last year. And you'll present yourselves and tell us who you are and we'll fangirl each other, okay? Because it's great to have fans too. <laughs> and be fans. <laughs> so that's the big news. Boy, I thought it was something else, you know? <laughs> no. I was scared there for a moment. So that's, that was our big news. And um, I guess it's also part of favorite things that happened in 2017, at least for me. Right. Because I went to EYF last year and it was amazing. Um, I think 
what I loved more about it was um, spending time with Alison and Faye and Catherine. I'm a, okay, so I'm a weird combination of being a people person and being people shy. I love hanging around people, but I tend to be very shy of how I interact with people. And it's true that sometimes you just need like a people break. So all that applies, but I tend to be a very big people person. So when I met people that I'm friends with, it's, yeah. We're not going to take any people breaks for two days. No. We'll be there we'll on be Friday hopefully and Saturday. On Friday and Saturday. So the if 15th we get the tickets. and 16th. <laughs> the tickets haven't gone on sale yet. Mm -hmm. At least they had it yesterday. I haven't checked today. Um, so hopefully we'll be able to get tickets for the Friday and Saturday. We won't be there Sunday and we won't be there. Um, yeah, we won't be there Sunday because that's the day it starts. Friday it starts. Friday, right? Thursday. Friday and Saturday, isn't it? No, no, no. It ends on the 17th. I'm pretty sure it's 15, 16, 17. I thought it was 14 to 16, but then my boyfriend checked me. He's like, no, it's 15. Anyway, we will be there Friday and Saturday. It doesn't matter the days. We'll be there those two days. Um, yeah, it's it's Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. Because I remember reading yesterday that it said that on Sunday, they're going to have additional activities for anybody who sticks around after EYF is over. Whatever the dates, we will be there Friday and Saturday. Um, so... Please, if you're able to make it, um, I know Faye's going, I know Charlie's going, I know Rosina's going. Sandra, are you going? Sam, are you going? I don't know about you guys. Have you heard from Jared from, um, Jer oh, from yes, Hand Me Down Crochet? No, he said. Hand Me Down Knits. He, hand Me Down Knits and Crochet. He's well, not going? Um, no, he said that he had planned on going, but he's got another trip planned with oh. his some friends at the same time, so he would be planning it for next year. Hmm. We won't know if we'll make it next year, but we'll be there this year. Right. So, favorite makes of 2017. My favorite make, I don't have it with me. It will already got shipped off to Florida <laughs> um, at the beginning. I was going to say at the beginning of the year, but no, this is the beginning of the year. I'm confused. At still. the end of last year. At the end of last year, it got shipped to Florida. Uh, but it's my favorite make for several reasons. And it's the um, Autumn Leaves top, which I crocheted last year for EYF, and I wore for EYF, and it's this. Um, I have in my little journal, it was made with this yarn, which was uh, from Catherine of Crafternoon Treats, and it was just a simple pattern that I use from YouTube Bob Wilson 123 Claire she had the adult crochet sweater I've never made it into a sweater I usually wear it as a blouse I loved it because those yarn colors are gorgeous they're gorgeous I loved it because was I was that, no, that wasn't your first move. no but I was able to crochet the pattern in fit sport weight while it was written for worsted weight and I managed to make the adjustments fit me which I loved uh, like I said I use Catherine's yarn the colors were amazing I really like working with Catherine's yarn I like woolly wools and I like soft wools but I tend to enjoy working more with woolly wools because I don't use them as often so it's I don't know I, I think of it as a nice vacation from merino yarns um, so that was um, my favorite make and also favorite make because I wore it to EYF, um, which I had a lot of fun, um, but it was um, murder. It was murder to wear because it was so hot. It was really hot. Yeah, um, we kind of thought it would be a chance for you to wear something. Yeah, and it, it, I mean it was. I just had to have been in shorts from outside. the waist down. <laughs> outside it was okay, it was the inside of yeah. the festival that was hot. So um, I'm wearing my second favorite make, which is what I called my chocolate frog pullover. And it's my first vintage pattern. So it was my first make of 2017. It was my first vintage pattern. And it was your first, um, it was the first time using Forbidden Wool yeah, yarn, Forbidden Wool, which is a cotton linen blend, and it's sport weight. The pattern called for DK, but I used a sport weight, and it worked out beautifully. It is a bit more cropped than I'm used to. Well, that's probably why. But because you're using a smaller yarn. Yeah, but it would have been really easy if to you adjust. Did the exact same size. Maybe, maybe it would have worked. worked. But um, 
yeah and I also really like this top because it's double crochet but every so often you get a popcorn mm -hmm. stitch which is why it's called the popcorn mm -hmm. pullover and I thought that was really fun breaking mm -hmm. the monotony of the stitches and also because it combines crochet and right and that was one of the things that we noticed when we were looking at vintage pads last year how yeah. how they just combine the two when you need I one thought, you need mm -hmm. one when you need the other you need the other and there was no there was no um there was no line was you no, know it's like oh no discord just, between yeah. the two of them yeah. So I just thought it was great. The I knit, uh, the pattern calls for you to knit the neckline, the rib, and the cuffs on the sleeves. I found the sleeves way too tight when I knit the cuff, so I just... Probably because of the size of the arm. Yeah, so I just crocheted uh, my um, cuff, and I knit my neckline, and I knit my rib. This is a one-by-one one rib, and it was perfectly fun. Very so, pretty. It is very pretty. Yeah, I really like this shirt. Um, I don't wear it as often because sometimes I find it hard to find um, high waist pants. <laughs> they're, they're a bit scarce, aren't they? Especially with, let's not talk fashion because I've been flustered by fashion trying to buy clothes for Christmas. So, but yeah, yeah. so I'm wearing my second favorite make. I couldn't really decide between um, both of them because they're very... All, I think all the garments, I'm pretty attached to all the garments I've made, but these are my favorite. And they're actually the first two garments I crocheted for 2017. So. Right, and like I said before, I'm wearing one of my favorite garments, which is the Luna Top from uh, Doreen Orenstein's book, or Orenstein, I'm sorry if I'm butchering the last name. Um, a lot of people talked about this book mm -hmm. this year, it was like a thing going on. And it's got a lot of uh, tops in there that I planned on making. I even planned on doing a review of the book during the year that I didn't do. But I'm sure somebody will come up because I've seen several people do more than one garment from from the book and, and talk about how yeah. how well oh, here paid, made the pattern was. And I uh, the difference I made here was, remember that I added the um, Broom broomstick the lace sleeve. Yeah, the sleeves are shorter, if you can tell. Mom's sleeves don't reach to her elbow. Right. Yeah. And she did a broomstick lace sleeve. But that was the only... At the end. It's just because I was practicing it because uh -huh. Clarissa was doing her shawl with that. And I found it pretty, so I did that addition. But in general, it's from Rowan Cotton that Clarissa Rowan also Cotton brought Blasse. me from. from that Luke? was... No, that no. one's... Uh, John Lewis. John Lewis. No, John from John Lewis. Lewis. And uh, I like the stitch. It was a new stitch pattern. And um, I I'm also wearing it. my favorite making oh, earrings yeah. of last year. Which were yeah. these crocheted earrings? I wore those to EYF last year because I also mm. love them. I think they look great with that haircut. So and so we were all but happy with the makes that we were able, the garments that we were able to learn to crochet last year, more than inspired to crochet some, some more this yeah, year. I'm convinced that this year is also going to be the year of garments for me, just like last year, because I'm still got the garment bug. It's just a pause because I finished. Um, a couple of big projects. You know, socks are small projects, but they're big for me. So, <laughs> yeah. In terms of the time. In terms time consuming. Yeah. Take a lot of time. So, let's go on well, to... I guess since we talked about what we're wearing, and I mentioned that I finished a big project, we should probably move on to... Finished objects. Yay! Who were our first finished objects for 2018. And we'll also talk about some of the last finished objects that we did for 2017 that you weren't able to see because uh, we didn't podcast anymore. Yeah, it, they came out in the um, 12 days of Christmas. Right. But if you don't didn't watch them, we're just going to go over them very quickly here. Mm -hmm. If you want more details, head over to the 12 days of Christmas, guys. You can right. still have some Christmas in your life. Right. So um, the first one is hanging up at the back here, if you'll remember. It was my... Uh, countdown calendar for Christmas that I um, was a little late starting it and so a little late completing it. I chickened out on the embroidering in the numbers and just decided to cut out the numbers from felt and glue them. I would not have embroidered the numbers <laughs> and, either. Um, no, then I would have had to start like in January of last, the year before in order yeah. to crochet all those numbers. I didn't get 24. I didn't get 24 objects. I wasn't able to do one for each day for this year but maybe for next year. And it was more or less a Harry Potter dedicated um, uh, Christmas oh, yeah. countdown ornaments. I tried to get in things that were related to Harry Potter. Some pumpkin pasties. Mm -hmm. um, this is Crookshanks, which is Hermione's cat. 
Um, this it looks is, like he has a mustache, but it's really whiskers. <laughs> this is the um, just Gryffindor colored hat. Gryffindor colored hat. This is a mermaid tail. mermaid tail. This is prongs, Dumbledore, a snitch, teacup. Because what proper British person does not right. drink a cup of tea? Right. We've got um, Hedwig. Hedwig the L. That was um, one that Clarissa made for me. If you yeah. watch the Twelve Days of Christmas and Butterbeer. And look, a Weasley Dobby jumper. Sucks. Oh yeah, we see the jumper, Dolby socks over there in the corner, and some butterbeer. So I didn't get them all, but um, because I found that crocheting tiny things took a lot more time than I thought it would. It does. But you think it's not going to because it's tiny, tiny but mm -hmm. but crocheting tiny takes time. Yes. And all of these, um, when I put up this on my Ravelry, I will credit the person that I got the idea from for the ornament or the, just the, the pattern, the actual pattern, mm -hmm. because most of them were, were not uh, included in. This is a um, pattern from Yarns Inspirations, and uh, they did an actual cal uh, working on this calendar, and I included some of the ornaments that they included in theirs, but since I wanted to make it Harry Potter related, I surfed the internet looking for other uh, patterns that they didn't include. So I will include that on my my uh, Ravelry description of the project just in case. I want to give credit to those people because it wasn't by no means what did I create those things. Okay, so that was one of the makes that extended from last year. What's one of yours? Well, I don't have it with me because it was a Christmas gift. Mm -hmm. So I'll put a picture here. I did post it on Instagram and I finished my Holly. And Holly is the name that I gave to my Third Galahad <laughs> Dragon, right. which is a pattern by Laura Taylor from the Stitch Tower on Instagram and on Etsy and on Ravelry. And if you've been following me for a while, you'll know all the details of this um, dragon. Feel free to check her out on Instagram. It's an amigurumi. Uh, one of the things I did want to mention, because some people have asked me tips and I couldn't think of any because sometimes I just do things automatically. But when I did this, um, Holly Dragon, I really sat down to think of how I put the pieces together. And one of my um, suggestions, I will, suggestions? Consejo. Yeah. Advice? Advice. I would, that I have for you is to make sure you stuff your neck well. Um, if you stuff the neck well, it holds up the head better. Also, positioning the head too far forward, well, you're going to just have him decline. What I also did this, t well, I forgot, but what I should have done is put a bag of lentils at the bottom of the dragon when I was stuffing him so he would sit up straight. I just stuffed it more than usual and he sat up straight and she, a she, sorry, it's a she. And the tail, um, I sewed it a bit lower. So I just sat her down to see where I should put the tail so it would balance. When she was sitting down, she would actually stay flat and she wouldn't lean forward or lean back from the weight of the tail. Um, for the wings, I all never have the patience to crochet four pairs of wings to sew two together. I don't. So what I did was that I crocheted some piping into the last row of the wing so it would have be sturdier and actually stays open it, it gives it weight right. so it, it's I've seen people do the same thing with the yeah. wire that they use for flower yeah you could use flat flower but flower I just had making, what do you call it um, cra a flower wire it's it's mm. a green a skin thing but um I just had pipe cleaners so I used the pipe cleaners I just crocheted over the pipe cleaners and um I always sew my spine before I add my wings because that gives me an idea of how equidistant I should make it from the spine and the wing. So that's what I do. Just some little tips and tricks. If you've never seen the pattern or made it, it makes absolutely no sense what I'm talking about. But I know a lot of you have purchased the pattern and have made several um, of Galahads. <laughs> so I just thought I would put it out there in case um, yeah. Right, I made one this year too. It was actually my first attempt at amigurumi, and uh, it was also a gift for um, that was earlier during 2017. Mm -hmm. But for this Christmas, I also did a second attempt at amigurumi when uh, one of my 12 days of Christmas, I gifted Clarissa with this fox. What and does it's the a fox say? 
<laughs> hey, it's a fox from um, Storyland Miss, and um, I purchased a purchased pattern. Um, she gives all the details for for making it, and she gives a uh, few pointers on how to stuff it. And um, um, so, yeah, it does stand up by itself, but it does have a lot of uh, mistakes because it was the first time I was making something so small <laughs> and something that where well, you had to incorporate more than one color. Yeah. And so, it's always, if you notice here at the bottom, you can see where I carried my yarn from one side to the other until I needed it again, and um, it really didn't cover up with the other yarn that was going over it. So, there's got to be a better way to do it. I guess I'll figure that out sometime in the future, because I did purchase well, a couple of other patterns from her uh, sale at the end of the year. And um, I still think he's a fox, a gorgeous fox. And yeah, we have a thing for fox. We were one of the plans was to make a fox. What was it? A fox? Not a jumper. It was oh, a, a from Vicky cow. Brown. A she cow. has a cow. And we never did that. with foxes all at the bottom. I purchased. It's a paid for pattern. Was so it knitted? No, it was crochet, crochet. actually. Uh, it was color blocking. I guess you would call it because you did make the foxes at the bottom. So it was a wonderful poncho cow thing because it. Pretty long on the shoulders. It's yeah. pretty long on the shoulders, but not long, long enough to be called a poncho. So I mm -hmm. guess you could call it a cowl, but it also has like a, a collar. But it's a great pattern. And I know Kay from the Bakery Bears, she mm -hmm. had a Christmas sale, and she just came out with a pattern called Fantastic Mr. Fox. Mm -hmm. So if you knit your foxes, you could I'm also... pretty sure I bought that too. <laughs> yeah. I'm pretty sure I bought Mr. Bakery Bear. Because she had, a, she had a gift for us, right? She had a gift for all of her viewers mm -hmm. where she was for one day, it would be 50% off yeah. or something like that. Yeah. And so I took advantage of that too and, and um, decided to show a little love there buying some of those patterns. Yeah. So do you have any other makes for this beginning of the year? Oh, yeah. Um, so part of the 12 Days of Christmas as well. Um, I made mom uh, for six geese a laying. I made a little nest and some eggs. Um, these eggs were just some small crochet eggs from the blog Pops de Milk. So it's Pops D E Milk, like normal. Uh, the little nest I just crocheted myself. Now that I'm thinking about it, I should probably crocheted over some pipe cleaners as well to make it sturdier because I just sprayed it and it's a bit hard but not enough to hold the weight of the eggs. So this I uh, just made it up myself. Um, I believe I did 10 single crochets then I did magic loop I mean, a I, magic mean I magic ring and I did 10 single crochets then I did 20 half double crochets, so two half double crochets in each single crochet. Then I did increases in every other stitch for the third round. And then for the fourth round, I just um, did increases in every two stitches. And for the fifth and sixth rounds, I just single crocheted in every stitch all the way around to bring the rib up. So it's just something simple but it was a fun to make um i like how the eggs came out i decided to put some feathers so that was one of our gift exchanges mm -hmm. for um this end of the year um i believe that what i have to talk about as my finished objects are my socks yes yes so they had done living in this bag that clarissa had gifted me for the 12 days of christmas my birdie bag was got this was for four what? Calling birds. Four calling birds bag because it's got four types of birds on there, all um, segmented and together. It's also my first quilted bag, like prop, like proper, not proper quilting, but patchwork bag. And so I was using the Aid uh, to Texas sock blank, sock blank that uh, Goosey Fibers put out after Harvey to help with. Um, Pets, pets that had been abandoned or just gotten lost during the hurricane and needed a home. And so this is my finished sock. I use as the pattern the mold wine pattern from Vicki Brown in her sock collection book. And um, I made them in the medium size. And I 
thought for a moment that I was I had thought enough about it so that my socks would come out. I was trying to use one and a half. They were four birds. Four birds, right? And I was trying to use like one and a half birds for each. I actually wanted, Clarissa Smith wanted me to save a whole bird yeah. so that I could put it into a frame or something. But I just think I don't sock, know about that. sock blinds are like a piece of art. Right, so. they are in themselves. And it's always a mystery of how they're going to uh, turn out. And I saw somebody making uh, knitted socks. Um, so I figured that knitted socks are going to look quite different from crochet socks for tons of reasons that we've mentioned before, before about using more yarn for crochet and etc. But there are my finished socks. They did not come out anything alike. <laughs> well, the thing is that that's the thing with the sock blank because mm. in the sock blank you started with the white. And At then the as you keep going, and then I, you end in color. I finished but here, a whole bird. I finished a whole bird here. And so and you start with the, the color. All the way up to the yellow of the yes. second bird. Yeah. So, and so this yellow connects with this yellow. Mm -hmm. But it keeps going. Until wasn't it keeps enough. Going. There was obviously a lot more yellow here than there was in between the two birds. And so that's why I didn't get um, identical socks. But, so, um, um, I've had a couple of people ask me about crochet socks, and I was thinking between the Wrong Strong book and the Vicky Brown book, which do you recommend for a person who's never crocheted socks? Well, I purchased the Wrong Strong for myself. You gifted me the Vicky Brown, is that yeah. correct? Yeah, I did. Um, the, the one major difference is the amount of patterns. Ron Strong has a lot more patterns. Vicky Brown has six patterns in her book, and Ron Strong has much more than that because he does uh, the socks, the first couple of socks, he does them two ways, um, from the cuff down or from the toe up. I make all my socks toe up. I've never made a, a um, cuff down sock. And um, uh, I guess another difference would be that Ron Strong goes into a lot of the technicalities mm -hmm. of the measurements that you need to take and um, how to... Um, make how that measurements affects each of the parts of the sock. And he goes into a lot of the, 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 technicalities, the technicalities that you need to be able to create your own sock at some point. Vicky Brown doesn't do that as much. Um, but I, I believe that um, maybe because of the editing wasn't as um, the technical as editing. wasn't as finicky, wasn't as nitpicky for Ron Strong's book as it was for Ricky Brown's because there were occasions in the Ron Strong uh, socks where I could say, look, there's something missing from this line, or the instruction is not as clear as it should be. More so, I think, than the than the Ricky Brown. But I say, hey, if you want to crochet socks, just pick a book um, and stick with it. Right, the Ron Strong. Oh, I didn't bring it with me, but it was one of the books that everybody talked about, as well as Vicky Brown. They got a lot of publicity yeah. on the, the crochet Also, um, Vicky um, Brown, I don't, think, I don't think she's published. Vicky Brown is also in UK terms, yeah. whereas Ron Strong is US terms. So you might want to take that into consideration. Vicky Brown, I don't think she's published another sock book. But yeah. I believe if you, uh, she also dyes yarn. So if you buy her sock club packs, she includes yarn and a sock for those packs that a she crochet has, sock? Yeah, oh, okay. that she has designed. Oh, I, um, I also think she's published some patterns individually on Ravelry, mm -hmm. so maybe you don't want to invest in a whole book because you're not sure how it's going right. to turn out. Yeah, if you so, don't understand or if you're going to find the instructions yeah. clear, so you just purchase one. Ron Strong has also uh, published in various and several magazines, crochet magazines, so um, I don't remember if Simply it was the crochet, 64. I think. I think it might have been the 64. Um, yeah, and simply, you know, and simply crochet and inside crochet in crochet world. He's he's done he's several. Published. He does other things besides socks. He has other. He's like uh, he has accessories and garments. But, but he's mostly known for his socks. He's like the crochet. sock guru of mm -hmm. the crochet world. Right. And so you can also try out uh, some of his patterns without having to purchase the whole book if you would like to. Um, but yeah, I don't think about crochet socks. I think the same thing is true with knit socks is that you have to approach it with calm, you know, calmly. Yeah. Because and they're I, not trying to mm -hmm. rush through it because it's a process mm -hmm. of learning, if, of learning how your tension and how the yarn you selected, because sometimes it'll be sock yarn. All yarn is not made do, the same. Right. If you do the, um, 
the one that I call Westminster Abbey. What's it? <laughs> West Yorkshire Spinners. <laughs> the West Yorkshire Spinners. Uh, it is not good to crochet. It's not with. good to crochet with at You get all. a very Neither tough fabric, whereas when you knit, you get a very soft fabric. Neither so is Regia. It's not a good sock yarn to crochet with because I think Regia is softer than West Yorkshire Spinners to crochet with. Um, I've knit with both. And they're lovely to knit with. Mm. Uh, you get a very soft yet sturdy fabric. So for knitting, I think they're amazing. But like mom was saying, I also feel that the same thing is true for crochet socks when you, like, sorry, I went ahead, my thought was running one way, my mouth was running another. What I meant to say with, when you knit socks, you're giving a standard, just giving standard instructions. And the first time you make it, you probably follow those standard instructions. The same thing is true for crochet. Then the more you start knitting or crocheting your socks, you're finding out what's perfect for you, what for feels your better foot. for your foot. Not um, all feet are created equal. No, sometimes <laughs> I have one foot a smidge longer than the other. So there's always one sock that I have to make a wee bit longer than the other. Um, the way I step affects how socks feel. I tend to uh, put a lot of weight on the inside of my foot versus the outside. That also affects how socks fit. Um, I have very skinny ankles but wide feet. So I tend to knit my socks with either 56 stitches on the ankle or 60 stitches. And then right before the heel, I do two rows where I increase because my heel needs to be 64 stitches as does my foot. So, it's all about... A lot of these ideas, however, even though she's talking about them for knitting, they are, they are also, you can find the analogy yeah, in the crocheting I mean. socks. Yeah, that's what I meant. Um, you know, that, it's both right. true for knitting and right. crochet. So, I think it's just a good skill. Maybe if you want to knit socks, you could start with crochet socks if you're too afraid to knit them. Um, I don't know, just start with whatever you want. Well, yeah, you know, I, one of the things I've always told Carissa is that what stops us from doing things is our fear of mm. doing them. But if you, I mean, if you want to do something, I have found that crocheting, knitting, it's a recipe. It's like cooking in the kitchen. You follow the instructions and it comes out. Sometimes you follow the instructions and it doesn't come out because we find a lot of Recipes that don't come out when you cook them. The same thing might happen for think, because uh, of your attention. Because Catherine of was talking about that in her latest podcast, wasn't she? When she tried to make that clay, oh, air dried okay. clay, and she said, "Sometimes I think these people just don't do something that they like. Don't tell you something that they do, or right. they just very selective for the pictures." Right. I uh, think, we've we've always thought that. Yeah, for recipes especially right. because sometimes cakes and stuff mm -hmm. that don't grow as much and don't look as pretty, but um. But yeah, if you want to make socks, the thing you have to do is just decide to make them and take the time to learn. Because you can't approach this like something that I want to finish quickly. Like, you know, I want to get it done. And um, it is very satisfying to have these small projects always on the go to relax from the larger projects, I think. And plus, they're on the go, so you can take them anywhere. Right. Um, but one thing I will say is that a crochet sock, you can get it done quicker than a knitted sock. <laughs> I don't know if it's just my experience with Clarissa, <laughs> um, but, um, speaking but, of socks, um, yeah, I've noticed that. I've never tried knitting socks. I'm thinking about adding it to my intentions list, but I'm not convinced yet because, um, well, I, added I don't know if I want to do all that socks. relearning. I added crochet socks to my intentions list and I have even picked out, could you pass me that yarn? This one? Yeah. I've even picked out the yarn. Beautiful. That I'm going to crochet my first pair of socks with. And I've picked out my pattern. It's also from the Ron Strong book uh, because I purchased mm. a copy for myself. What is what is the This is blend here? BFL nylon. Oh, okay. So it's 80% yes. BFL, 20% nylon. The colorway is beach and it's from Lighthouse Yard. One of the socks that I like the most this year was made with BFL. 8020 yeah. or 8020 80, because it was from K Jones and that was one of the best the best make crochet makes of socks that I, I did during the year. So yeah, I think that's a good choice. I think so. Too. Let me mention the sock block blockers. Oh no. But yes. I will mention two things at once. Yeah. I'll talk about the sock blocker and Clarissa will talk about the sock that's on the sock blocker. Yes. Because both we, were a gift well, to me. 
I was gonna say we got a very great gift. It's mom's gift. I just since I'm living here, I also use it sometimes just now. Uh, but mom, I got this. Well, you can't really. Yeah, you gotta cover this. The sock blockers. Uh, I didn't remember that I had asked my daughter for them, but she said I had. I did remember putting it on my. Um, my get your yarn wish uh, list. Right. Get your yarn which is granted wish list. And obviously with Did no you, intention had, of getting them. I had left the sticker on here. Oh, I pulled it off and I threw it away. What? Because I didn't know. I thought it was a sticker that had No, 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 no. This is surprise. from The Knitting Left on Etsy. That's why I left a sticker there. But these are wood, right? Mm -hmm. And now they're uh, glazed. Varnished. Varnished, varnished. That's right. And if you just got a little heart on the heel, and oh, I just think they're so beautiful. They're very pretty. They're size large. Yes, that's the difference. They're large because I found that most of my socks these that I made medium. previously didn't fit well on the medium, except for these. <laughs> <laughs> these, I tried them on the large, and they were too small for the large, so I don't know what happened. So these uh, were gifts well, they haven't been washed, for that's... Mom for Christmas, and... They are made with the only ever skein of Vicky Brown yarn that's been in my stash. Loved working with it. This was her something Christmas base. Oh my god. I think it was called peppermint what bark. I think it was called peppermint bark. That was the candy that you gave to me. Yeah, but I also think that was the name of this. <laughs> well, I, I, did you mention it on the uh, last podcast maybe? I don't know. But we'll put in... The uh, um, this details. Is the Rose City Roller pattern. Uh, I just did 64 stitches all the way through. Um, I'm not sure if I did a rounded toe because this is the second time I make the sock pattern. And about the fifth time I used the toe pattern included there for all the other socks to make rounded toe. I just realized after making five pairs of socks with that rounded toe, that I was not following the instructions for the rounded toe. I was basically making up my own instructions because, yeah, I don't, I don't know what kind of toe I end up doing, but it fits. Well, that's the way <laughs> invention comes about. That's the way design comes about. If you watch uh, Craftinoon's Treats but don't ask uh, me. New Year's podcast, she also mentioned that she oh, yeah, started so making a sock, realized she wasn't following it, and ended up designing a sock. So. Yeah. yeah, that's how design So, um, what's special about these is that um, I followed something that Sandra from the Cherry Heart podcast has been doing in her podcast, and that is that if you notice here, you carry, the heel has um, the slip knit, which makes it sturdier. So I followed the slip knit all the way to the gusset, and I forgot to actually include it for part of um, the foot. I forgot to include it as part of the foot, um, so that's something that I want to work on in future socks because I, I do think it's going to make it sturdier. Um, my sister, the pair of socks that I made her, wore out exactly um, at the heel and the... And the ball of the foot, I think she and said. And the ball of the foot. So it wore, for her, it wore down here and here. So maybe I'm thinking, what if you just made the whole bottom of the sock slip knit, slip knit? You'd never finish. <laughs> so would. Jeez. You have little faith. No, I have faith. It just takes longer. I think just slip stitch take longer because the sock doesn't grow in length. No, knit, slip, knit, slip. Oh, that's the on way. On the same line. Yeah, on the same oh, line. So okay. you would, if that's 64 stitches, I'm thinking I would probably do it on 32 stitches. And maybe not for the whole foot, um, but at least for the balls of the feet and the oh, um, okay. extend it from the gusset a bit. Well, I'm very happy with my socks because you all know I'm a big fan of wool knit socks. Who would think in Puerto Rico that I would always want somebody to give me wool socks? Oh, hey, socks. in New Hampshire, you used every single pair of wool socks. So. And double sometimes. <laughs> yeah. um, so I've got one more finished object that I carried over from 2017, but I finished it yesterday. Fresh off the hook, and mm. it's this scrumptious bit of yarn. You missing some ends? Oh, <sighs> seriously? I thought I had woven in all my ends. I feel that the ends 
are like the hydra, you know? You cut off one end, three more pop up. <laughs> I swear, that is what they do. Um, so this, I was working on it the last previous time we podcast. Thank you. For, yeah, let's hold it up together. Um, and this uh, design is by Rosina. Uh, she gifted it to me because I won the back to school sweater cow. And so I chose her um, fade crochet shawl, but she also gifted me her off your rocker shawl. And in this shawl, she includes um, kind of like notes on how to turn the shawl into a blanket. So that's what I did. And this is a baby blanket for my friend. It's just a 30 by 30 Stylecraft Special DK. I used... It's very soft. A, yeah, it's really soft. And it soft. hasn't even been washed. I used a 4.5 millimeter crochet hook. And for the border, I used a 5mm crochet hook and I did a crap stitch border. Before doing the crap stitch, I did three rounds of single crochet and then my fourth round was the crap stitch border. Which I had never done before and I must say, I think adds a wee bit of elegance to the blanket. Um, I think and you used up three balls of yarn. Three completely. entire balls of this sage yarn. This sage yarn, which is the greeny... That doesn't really look like sage to me. Are these balls or skeins? Or? The, these are skeins. Well, okay. So I used um, sage from Stylecraft Special DK. I used three complete ones. And for the pistachio. pistachio, which is the green border, I used one complete one and about 10 grams from another ball. Oh, 10? Yeah. It turned out a lot more than I thought it would be. Maybe less. Maybe it was like five grams. I think it was five grams. It was very insignificant. I was missing literally this much. <laughs> this much to finish it. So I lost at Yarn Chicken, but luckily I did have one extra ball of the pistachio to include. So that very pretty was a huge project. Right. And right. this is the How long did it take you? I'm uh, not so much really. It's just that some days it was too, way too hot to actually work on it. Um so I tended to work on it on the evenings and then I fell asleep. So it was Kind of like maybe a week. If I would have worked on it only, it would have been about two weeks, I think. I don't know how Rosina finishes blankets and like... Days. Nada. Ella va como que boom and blanket, done. I swear, she's got a magic wand instead of a crochet hook. Um, I do have a quick project here that I wanted to mention, just to mention it, because I was uh, trying to participate in the, the wonder, one, one, one skein wonder... One skein wonderland. And um, um, I said, oh, well, I'll make a washcloth. But what I didn't realize was that the washcloth only had 56.7 grams. So it doesn't qualify. But um, it was um, from a uh, book of just washcloths or dishcloths that I purchased in Walmart. So and I really like the stitch. It That's matches. That honeycomb stitch. It matches um, the baby. So, yes, yeah, so we could give it to the baby. That's a honeycomb stitch, right, you said? Mm -hmm. That's a honeycomb stitch. It's really, oh, it's really pretty. Um, forgive us just, uh, if we're a bit like peaches and cream. all over the place with where the camera is, but I'm recording on a Christmas present. Not mm. camera. It's an iPad mini. An so, iPad mini. Yeah. We'll, we'll see how this goes. Um, okay. You want to mention any other Christmas gift? No. Uh, oh, Christmas gift. Yes. <laughs> well, we were in what? We were doing finished, finished objects, but the sock blockers were a Christmas gift, so I... Connects no, you know to, what? Connects to Yeah, Christmas. connects. So, um, one of the Christmas gifts I received wasn't the jacket, it was these awesome pins. I posted a picture of them on Instagram. They're from the Clever... Can I focus on one? The Clever Clove. Is it Focus? Mm, not really. Okay. I can't see. <laughs> so these were from the Clever Clove on Instagram, and she's got a shop. Yeah, I don't think it's on Etsy, is it? Is it on no. Etsy? Anyway, it's on Etsy. No, she's it's. Uh, she's got her own website. Her own website. Her pins are amazing, and I absolutely love them. I also asked. It's no, it's really hard. It's blowing it out. There we go. There, perfect. Right. Um, I also got. Lovely llama bag. That was a hard secret to keep, Vivian. From Pearl and Plum. Hi, Vivian. So, oh, um, 
Oh, I got an agenda. I love getting agendas for Christmas. It was all about llamas this Christmas. And oh. um, I got another sock blank. This is watermelon from um, Kayleen, who's Little Bean. I just love sock blanks, but I have so many hanks of yarn. And it was really hard not to keep this for myself. Aww. You can go to her site now, and she's, for the new year, has uh, split the sock blank. Um, and two, rolled it up, rolled it up, is that so you get identical. identical. 250, right. So you don't get, they're not identical, but they're more like mm, cousins. They're very similar, and they look really pretty. And this is just beautiful. This one mom also gifted to me on the 12 days of Christmas. This was my 12 drummers charming. Um, so, so we have yet got to, lots of socks, socks in your future. <laughs> <laughs> I found it a very enjoyable experience to crochet directly from the sock blank. A I lot of people I, don't like to. I think I want to They like to from um, this one. unravel it and, and oh no 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 no, um, no 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 what do they call it? Relax the yarn. No. But I found it. No. It, maybe it was just because it was that pussy fibers um, sock blank. Yeah, that I don't know, but I, I found it very enjoyable. Um, I the only reason I didn't find it pleasant, the only time I tried um, crocheting with a sock blank, was because I was ignorant and naive. I didn't know that you could only pull from one end, so I was pulling from the other end, and my yarn was getting tangled, and it was a disaster. So I had when I figured it out a month later that I was pulling from the wrong end, I pulled from the right end and just caked it up. But I don't like caking up yarn. <laughs> so yeah, that was, that's the advantage. That you can actually crochet from it like that. Yep. I wanted to mention so, a, a gift that I got that is all over the uh, podcast on the internet because it seems that. that Santa Claus did a mass production of these books and every... Almost every podcaster that we watched yeah. received a copy of and, the book. And blogger. It's called Making Winter, and we don't actually have that winter. much of a winter here. But the book is beautiful. It's about makes that you can uh, create during the winter yeah. season to Baking. motivate yourself and to to um, um, just make going through winter a lot easier. And the pictures and, are um, gorgeous. I and the writing and the recipes. It's a beautiful book. And this so is the Clarissa United got States one, and I got one. Right, right. version, which, guys, you remember how I was discussing how sometimes I think the covers for the European versions are cooler than the US? No, not this time. I'm sticking with that one. That one's way cooler for me. It's um, very pretty. So it's actually my... So there are makes to crochet here. There are bakes. Things that you can bake. Jewelry there making. is jewelry making with clay and jewelry making um, with crochet. Oh, this is a project that Mom and I will be hooking together because we both loved it and I've got my yarn all picked out for it. Maybe we can make a lot of them and take them to EYF as a little exchange oh, We gifts. could. Because we, we could. were thinking about doing something jewelry related. So it's a very pretty book. I'm very thankful to Santa do it for with bringing like it to us. all the and, leftover um, bits and bobs from all the projects we've made. I don't know. So that was another one. Okay. Um, oh, well. Uh, if I talk about the next one, then I have to talk about, yeah. the My husband is very... Um, direct with his gifting. He just asks you what do you want and then he goes and he purchases it. So I always keep an Amazon wish list of things that I would like and, and this time, make it easy for him to just go and get it. This time he bought everything on and the he list. Went and he purchased basically everything that was on the list and it. most of what I had this year had to do with felting, with needle felting because I had mentioned several times that I wanted to get into needle felting in the sense of I already requested making um, Making figures, 3D figures, and also little wool paintings. Uh, and so um, I've had a go at needle felting before. Um, so I took, you know, for example, here, this is, um, I took a class on needle felting, and this was one of the things that. You want to show that? Well, this is what uh, I asked for him to make as a gift. Um, she's always got to hit it really high. She always has to go. Well, it's the first. It's, high it's expectations. The, it's the second Yeah, it really is. It's right. So, yeah. I, it's not a high expectation. I love cupcakes. Hence the name Crochet Cakes. I didn't like how Crochet Cupcakes sounded, so I just did Crochet Cakes. But I love cupcakes. So, one of the first yeah. things that I did when we were 
I took a course on felting, and one of the projects that was in the course was this, um, I don't know, what is this called? Embroidered ribbon. I don't know what it's called. What you call it's it. not an embroidery hoop. I know that. Uh, it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's a made of an embroidery hoop, but it's basically putting together um, uh, pieces of scrap, felting. The scrap has to be have a cotton blend. It has to have a uh, has to be a natural bio, fiber. A natural fiber in it, and so uh, through the natural fiber, you can you know you should be able to see in the back if your felting has gone through. You should be able to see your design on the back. And oh, look what I noticed. If I put it this way, the word is backwards. But if I put it this way, well, you can read it completely. But so that's... Then I chose a phrase to embroider onto it, which says, uh, ruffle your feathers. That's so, not our word for the year. No, no, no. Our intention. But I am presenting it because one of the things we thought about doing was, once we've chosen our words for the year, was to create a... Um, something like this that we Christy put Crafts on a plate inspired stand. me because Chrissy Crafts was embroidering her word for the year, and I went, We should totally embroider our word for the year. So well, I thought about felting it, felting it onto yeah. a project like this for me. If I embroider it, keeping it in front of you, it'll be embroidered for next year because I've never embroidered <laughs> so. <laughs> so, keeping it in front of you where you can see it all the time, and that's a quick up and easy. It also makes it a uh, Quick gift. I, I think it's not that bad. Yeah. I but think then it's I worked on the second one. Look, I think it's gorgeous. which was a shot at my first um, wool painting. Wool painting. But I think if you remember, if you follow me on Instagram, because I don't think I ever showed it on the podcast. She's I made had the created bird. the bird previously, and so he wasn't felting well into my canvas. Just uh, you can't if you turn it around, you can't see the design on the back as well as you can see it on the front, which means that the felting didn't go through. But uh, he's stuck there. He doesn't appear to be he's going to fall off. My intention was to felt the word in down here. You and that way, do it. And that way I could keep it in front of me or on a wall. You can still and then do my it. second intention was maybe to give this to my husband as a present for Three Kings Day oh, because he likes be great, yeah. he likes some original paintings. We have a lot of them around the house. And this one right here is one that Clarissa did when she was in school. High school. It's, it's my what did, what did I call that? You called it your carnivorous rose. Oh, my carnivorous rose. And so, She's uh, so nice. That was my she? attempt at using playing around a little bit with all of my Christmas uh, gifts well, I think because I received wonderful. I received the the needles to felt with one from my husband and one if you remember from Hannah, from Hannah or the the um, cozy crochet <laughs> cottage where she sent me as our exchange for the oh uh, get your witch journey wishes granted. Imagine and Hannah so watching this. A lot of fun is going to be in this. I think it's a it's not totally a new craft because I had tried it before, but it will be. But you'll be developing your skills, which is um, great. And another another way to keep your mind busy. And um, I was listening to Hand Me Down Crochet Knits, and he said that he had uh, quite a different uh, moods and temperament before he started crocheting and um, uh, knitting, and that he feels that it has brought a better person in him to an improved personality to involve himself in crafts. So I'm hoping that will happen. Keep it coming, keep it coming. To see um, if that happens too. Speaking of developing new crafts and skills, um, I have um, no interest right now in Tunisian crochet. It's not something that really interests me. Uh, I would like to crochet cables. I've never done that before. I would like to try um, tapestry crochet. I've mm -hmm. never done that before. Color work crochet, I've never done that before. So, but that is, I think, setting the bar a bit too high for myself because. Well, maybe you can I'm choose be, one. Yeah, it's just that I'm going to be moving, I'm going to be starting a new job, I'm going to be, you know, it's just going to be the year of, of weddings, everybody's getting married, and I'm coming out in two of them. So, it's, it's just going to be a bit of a hectic year. 2018 is going to be pretty hectic. So, there's going to be a lot of change for yeah. us. Speaking of intentions and trying new things, um, I did my Christmas Eve cast on, which was supposed to count for the one skein wonder cow, but I'm slow, so I don't know. But this is a sock on knit, of course. 
This is the Blueberry Waffle Pattern by Sandy Turner, which was designed in 1998, guys. So, yeah, 1997, I think it was. It's been around for like 20 something years. So it's, um, it's a vintage pattern almost. But, uh, what I wanted to say is this is the first sock I've ever worked on Magic Loop and it's it's been a bit of a, a learning experience. It hasn't been too bad. I can't say I'm hating it. I'm enjoying it. I've just finished my gusset. So now I just have to learn how to pick up stitches. Um, that'll be a new experience. And to do so, I'm just using Kay's tutorials from the Bakery Bears, uh, which you get if you pay $5, if you're a patron of $5 or more a month, not a week or anything like that, it's a month. So I just thought I would show my knitting first because I'm the only one that's got some knitting. It's still snail knitting, guys, but also started the year strong with learning a new skill. So that's a work in progress? That is a work okay. in progress. So I'll show mine. Um, is that, uh, oh, you're hooked on, mom's hooked on something new. Something big. It's in this... Snoopy bag that Clarissa gifted me last year for Christmas and it's this pattern from Craftinoon Treats, from Captain of Craftinoon Treats. It's her poncho. She is currently carrying out a poncho along and so. ends the 14th of February, oh, so giving you time to uh, participate. I started a little late because of all the things we were doing for Christmas, and I didn't have all of these colors. She uses Stylecraft Batik. She uses uh, Batik, and she uses, oh, I can't count all the colors that she has yeah. there. But this is a, a, a paid-for pattern, but I don't think Catherine will mind if we, if we show you the colors, um, right? Because that's standard. So you can see that. So I'm only using six. The, the main color, so to uh, say, is this. Oh, and... You wanna? I've got the ball bands that, in here. This is petrol. Petrol, right? This is petrol. Stylecraft Special Decay in the colorway petrol. This one is parchment, and this one is, I believe, peach. No, it's not. This one is copper, and the last one that you have there is. I'll show. <laughs> doesn't fit in my hand, and so the last one that you have there, the ball band is there. They're enumerated by right? mocha. So mocha. mocha, mocha, mocha. That's number five. And so in that order, I began I crocheting these. It's two, three, four, and five because the one is the main yeah. color. And if the colors seem familiar, it's because we bought the um, Stylecraft Special DK packs for the Spicier Life blanket. Right, uh, this is Stylecraft Special DK, it's not the Batik. Yeah, I still have the intention of making that blanket. Because I wanted to but. make it out of stash, and this was in my stash, mm -hmm. and so this is where I'm up to now. I think it's looking really pretty. I've got two, two rounds of the color change, and I don't know how many rounds I'll have to make because she has more colors than I have, so. Um, I think her balls were also 50 grams, Yeah, I it? think so. Uh, these are 100 grams, so I'm hoping that, yeah, I'll be able to do the complete um, poncho. It's got a neck roll, which is optional, and um, I'm hoping that that will uh, turn out very nice. I like it so far. I think it's very It's pretty. got a, a long, uh, this color is going to be used for like a long band to bottom. I'll pop the pinch. And so, uh, I think she's got a big Where she pinch. used the, uh, yeah, or the other one too. This is where really she long. used the graphite, I think, or an iron, I don't know what it was. The graphite, I think it was. Oh, I'm going to be using this one. And that's, it's very nice. So, that was my, um, my only, my only work in project, progress for, for, well, not my only one. There's a second one over here, just to mention it quickly, that I also was gifted this yarn oh, yeah. from, um, my cousin. From Calusa's cousin, my husband's niece, she sent me this yarn. It's, um... Bernat Roving. Which roving, is, what are the, uh... It's 80% acrylic and 20% wool. 80-20. And uh, what I want to make with this is a pair of boots. Crochet boots from the Make & Do crew. She's got a, a couple of crochet boots. Boots and I chose one pattern to make. I only started it because I'm going to be missing uh, one ball. 
two more balls of this oh, yarn. Oh, yeah, yeah, we Two more balls of this yarn because they're high boots. So I basically just chose my flip-flops, made the holes along the side, and did with a cotton yarn. No, this is just, uh, I think it's just worsted. A worsted yarn, um, just did the single crochets that I need along the side to be able to connect my boot. And so that's as far as I've got now because I'm waiting for the other yarn to come in. Well, that's it for my make, for my works in progress. Do you have any other? Um, I don't actually. I just finished that um, the blanket and I've got plans for lots and lots of things. Um, but one of the first things I will uh, be, I guess, restarting for the sixth time is my good vintage cardigan um, from Simply Crochet Magazine. And um, this is like the started one, but I'm going to break this up because it's the perfect size if I want to start it from the hips up. But I kind of, maybe I should leave it from the hips up. I don't know. I kind of wanted to do it a bit more cropped. I like my cardigans to be cropped. Mm -hmm. I like them shorter. So um, I was going to break it up again and remove a total of six repeats. Six repeats. The granny square stitch. So three on each side. So it would be a bit tighter, but still loose enough for me to wear something under it. Because that's the key, isn't it? For a cardigan, you have to make it loose enough to fit something under it, but tight enough. So it doesn't look all boxy. Yeah. Anyway, I will be making this again. And I think she'll have enough yarn now to do it, yeah, because I was able to, to get one more, more of the chartreuse from the final sale of Crafty Noon Treats. Yes. And they're actually... Two different colorways, I mean two different dye lots, two different bases, but the color. Two different bases, but it's very similar. It's pretty, it's pretty spot on. Mm -hmm. This is 85% Romney Lambs Wool, 10% British Alpaca, 5% Blue Face Lester, Lester, and I don't remember this blend, but I think I've got a ball band for one of them. No, that's not it. <laughs> Aha, Chartreuse. This one is 90% Romney Lambs Wool and 5% BFL. So the one that's in the bowl, it's 95.5, and this is 85.10.5. Right, so this one's got alpaca, and this, this one's one got doesn't alpaca. have it. This one's got a bit more uh, blue face luster. Yeah, this yeah, this one and more Romney Lambs Wool. So I'm going to be starting that pretty soon because I want to wear it to Scotland because this year we're not only going for EYF we actually will be staying for a wee bit in Scotland to enjoy the scenery and all that so I plan on being toasty and warm and not complaining about the cold that's me. so I think that's it for all of our crafty that really, that really is discussion it. why did I feel like we well, sure that's it I felt like I've rushed this Christmas to work on so many things and now it's like, well, I'm all done. We're all done. Wow. We wanted to end the year by talking a little bit about our intentions for next year. And Not because work. we ever <laughs> keep to them, but um, because it's good. It's a commitment uh, before a community like uh, you guys are uh, are part of and we're part of and it's sort of like a commitment uh, to decide that you're going to make changes and they only become more real and when you actually share them with somebody who you think might uh, um, ask for some accountability, might make you accountable for mm -hmm. the things you said the previous year. So we look back at what we had said last year as our intentions for this year and we know that um, we weren't able to fulfill them all. We weren't able to keep our yarn stash down. We were not able to um, um, make some of the makes that we decided we were going to participate in. But we did a pretty good job at fulfilling our making this the year of garments. We also did a pretty good job of trying to find a new place to podcast where we had yeah. better lighting. And um, one thing I think we didn't do a good job of was restraining our yarn purchases. Um, we did okay at the beginning of the year. Uh, then I went to EYF, but that's like a different level. I, I can be forgiven for that. And I've been actually pretty good about it all throughout fall and December. 
I only purchased yarn um, Black Friday and I purchased one hank of indie dyed yarn from Forbidden Woolery. I did make a big purchase from Craftsy because um, another make that I plan on hooking is um, the fingerless mitts included in the Making Winter book that Faye did because I fell in love with them and I bought red yarn. I thought it would be great. This is great. Um, so I bought that from Craftsy and I also bought enough blanket to... Enough yarn. <laughs> Enough yarn to crochet you a blanket. You to tell them that you're making a blanket and then have purchased it. Yeah. Enough yarn to crochet a blanket for my new apartment. But that's all in Florida. Um, I also... Yeah, so I think the other thing I bought yarn-wise was mustache yarns. She had the Chewbacca colorway still in stock. Well, that was recent. That was the end of the year. Yeah, that was the end of the year. So I think I, I did okay from September through December. I really have really bought yarn. I think mom went off the caboozle from no, September I, I no through control. December. If you remember that, one of my, uh, my, my word from last year was balance. And I wanted to um, try and acquire some balance in my life in terms of how long I crochet versus how long I work on my actual job job where I make money to buy yarn to crochet and how much yarny time I spent versus how much family time I spent and I just yeah. and I say screwed it up on this podcast I'll <laughs> you out yeah I just I didn't I didn't achieve it I don't think at all in terms I did use up more of my yarn because we did a lot more makes this yeah, year than I did the yeah. previous year and so I was purchasing but after I had used up but I still think I can do better on that also. I think I can do better also so, so um, we can do better on that yeah especially now that I'm packing to move to Florida I've realized how much yarn I have <laughs> So my word for last year um, was determined and I think it's a hard wor word to tally up how well you did executing the word because I honestly don't remember what I did to work on fulfilling that word throughout the year. Um, I was determined to make it the year of garments, so I guess I can tally that up, but I didn't feel it was a good and proper word. So, um, yeah, um, you want me to start with my word? Yes, because I haven't selected mine. Oh, okay. So for this year, I'm very proud and very proud to say that the word I have chosen, the word I have chosen, words fail apparently, is organize and I think it's a very good and proper word especially given that I plan on moving soon uh, to Florida Sick organize is a really great word and I started out pretty decently I must say um, I've got my crafting agenda and in there I've written things I want to make during the day and kind of allotted time for everything that I want to get done and I've also organized the order of the makes I'm going to be making because I thought I should give priority to the things I carried on from 2016 um, 17 carried on from 2017 I thought that should be priority and I also want to organize my makes because I've been gifted a couple of patterns recently and I really really want to thank those people by making the patterns that they've gifted. So it's going to be a challenge because some of them are big garments, some of them are shawls. So it's going to take a lot of organizing my yarn, my time, and just basically my crafting life. It's, it needs to be thrown out the window, put back together, and put out in the lawn to, to set itself. Um, but I started out, I think, pretty good because the first thing I did was my crafting journal. 
It now says 2018. So that's one of the first things I organized. Like I said, my agenda has been getting a lot of use and it's only the 3rd of January. And yeah, I also want to organize myself so I can participate more in my own Ravelry group as well as other people's Ravelry groups. I think it's been a bit of a challenge this year um, trying to do everything, work, craft, Ravelry, Instagram, cook, clean, work, you know. Um, so that's my word for the year. Okay, well good luck with that. Um, I haven't chosen mine yet because I've been doing a lot of reflection and um, I didn't want it to happen like last year where I chose a word that I thought was great but I had no accountability for whether I actually implemented. The idea is to pick a word and then you have that word in front of you so you apply it to all your mm -hmm. things in life. Like if you want balance in your exercise then I'm doing exercise on a regular basis because I want balance. And so you try and connect it. Um, so I went into the internet and I found uh, on several sites of people where they help you choose your word. Mm -hmm. And one of those sites, I didn't bring my phone with you, but I can ask Clarissa to put the site up here when she's editing. The One of the sites actually um, uh, is a, a lady who dedicates her life basically to writing on her blog and to helping others in different um, aspects. And so she will send you over a five day um, time period uh, several emails. Um, it's like uh, prompts with prompts for a journal or prompts to think about. And you think about the, the answers to those uh, questions that she sends you over uh, five days and she um, assures you at the end of the five days you will have selected your word appropriately to your current lifestyle and what you want and your goals so that's and all of that. interesting. It's kind of like a tarot reading in a sense. She's sending you these words, I mean, these questions that you have to really reflect on mm -hmm. to answer. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of like a spiritual guidance. Mm -hmm. that's and to try and help you select the words. It's really nice. And so um, I'm waiting for that to, my, to get my five emails and to complete that process so that I can select my word. And so I'll get back to you later on during the year on what word I've selected and how I am plan to go about relating that word to every aspect of my life. Yeah, because there are some big changes coming for us this mm -hmm. year. Like, this will be the last month we podcast together um, because I'll be moving to Florida. And I think until we figure out how to be more tech savvy and maybe do split screens or something, maybe mom could have some special appearances on the podcast or maybe you're going to start your own podcast. Right, because she's moving to Florida. I could probably just fly down there <laughs> for the weekend. <laughs> Once a month. Uh -huh. well, yeah. Once every two weeks I can fly down and, and for a weekend. and um, But we'll have to figure that out. And yeah. so it's a year of a lot of changes and new beginnings. And, um, we and I have think to like, like the... Confront it. Just face it. Yeah. The best exotic miracle in the hotel says it's going to be all right in the end. And if it isn't all right, it's not the end. It's not the end yet. So we're hoping that it'll be a good year for both of us with all the changes. And that this time next year, well, we'll be talking about all the great things that we made and, and all the uh, great changes that we accepted and that we embraced and that we turned into great things for us. So. We hope you all have a very crafty fine new year. <laughs> new year, and that um, you can choose your word if that suits you, or just make your list of intentions or um, resolutions if that suits you. Or and, choose uh, your color palettes. Just try and start off the new year on a new foot and faith, accept it as even though it appears to be more of the same from one day after the next. We it, things in life are basically what you make of them. So if you decide that there's the end of things that I've been doing one way and the beginning of the way I'm going to do new things, then that's the way it's going to be. It'll be I a mean, new beginning for you and everything from last year and years before that is left behind and you simply begin basically a new phase in your life. Even though you're living in the same place, with the same people, under the same conditions, but 
I mean, it's new. Yeah, I mean, the sun always rises and the sun always sets, but depending on where you are when the sun rises or sets, it'll look different. So I think it's just, it might be more of the same, but like mom said, it's how you approach that sameness, I guess. So we hope you had a very, very merry, happy Christmas. We hope you enjoyed our 12 days of Christmas and Hope that you're ready to continue Christmas. with us in some way. Oh, well, maybe not as long as we do, but yeah. hopefully the celebrations continue in your heart and in your mind, and you've began this new year with a light heart and um, energized and ready to face a new year, knowing that you've got a lot of loved ones around you, people that are willing to help you and guide you and, and just make the journey with you. And so we know we're not alone this year because all of you are yep. out there and um, we hope you feel the same. Don't feel alone. We are here and so it's just a, a slight communication yeah. uh, away. I mean, you can comment on YouTube. You can subscribe on YouTube. You can comment on Ravelry on Instagram. So we can all answer each other and yes. make each other feel less lonely and less far away. So take care and have Happy a crafting. fantastic crafting week. And year ahead of you. So, happy bye crafting. for now. Bye. Happy crafting.